Shalom and welcome to Tumas Torah. This year is entitled The Band, the Chayrim, on Going Up to Arabayit. Recently, Rabbi in a text message, told someone that one who goes up to Arabayit, another person, someone who listens to it, Rav Avinair, uh, should not be a Havruta. A person should not learn to be a Havruta with someone who goes up to Arabayit. Obviously, that created quite a stir. One thing to say, Rav Avinair maintains that uh, you shouldn't go up to Arabayit. This is a great machloka to debate in Klai Yisrael, like many other arguments that we've had over the years. And so here, too, there's another argument. Rav Avinair has maintained quite clearly over the years that the one cannot go up, and he gives his reasons. He writes for him, and he articles on this. It's very clear. He also says a position of Rav who to cook. And he explains himself. And Rav Tau also, the Shishiva, Shlita, Har Hamor, also, very clearly maintains this of Avon Yisachar Cook's position, or Sihuda Cook's position, and they maintain that this is must be the position t- today as well. So Machloket in Klai Yisrael among Gedolim. Well, we know that Rav Dov Lior, Rav Benovich, and others maintain that one could and should go. Machlokes, but something new has developed. When a great rabbi like Rav Avinair says that one who goes up Another person cannot learn with him, pretty much putting him in cheyrem to a degree, excommunicating him to a degree by saying he cannot learn with such a person. Uh, he's no hagun, he's not proper, he's bachutz, he's out. It's a new level now. It's a new level, and to me it's very, very sad, very sad development. Because we have a machlokas, we have an argument, and that's what the whole shas is made up of. All of shas is made up of arguments. And when did an argument first start? A halachic debate with Moshe and Aaron in the Torah. Aaron's children die, neither of you die. And now the question is, Aaron, what's his status? On the one hand, he's an Oni, he just lost his relatives. On the other hand, he's Aaron Akohen. And with the Korbanot, eating the Korbanot, do not eat the Korbanot, burn the Korbanot. So Aaron and Moshe have a debate. Aaron does one thing, Moshe challenges him, Aaron explains himself, Moshe says, oh, that's good. And that's the beginning of history, of arguments. Now there's some arguments where a person goes ahead and maintains something that puts himself out of the fold. Usually the criteria that we use is Yud Gimel Ikarim. A person goes ahead, denies Mashiach, Has V'Shalom, Tzvi God, Prophecy. The Torah, halachic system. He maintains that we could change the Torah and change the mitzvot. So these are the 13 principles of faith. A person goes ahead and on these areas says something where he's violating, he's rejecting one of the 13 principles of faith. So then he's putting himself out of the fold. And if he follows someone who maintains that position, he's in a different camp. That's true. But usually we have leeway and argument within the 13 principles of faith. Both people are anchored in halacha. So then we have, from Moshe and Aaron's time down, we have arguments. We have Hillel, we have Shammai. Rav Avinair, in the article in the last couple of days, there's been a lot of talk about this. So there's an article writing up his shitot, assuming it's an accurate description of his position, that he says that Shammai and Hillel, their arguments were arguments. That's true, but neither one maintained to go to Harabai. So that's different. Which I'm not fully, I don't fully understand what, what that's saying. And, and in the Holocaust, great rabbi said that, that they should stay in, the, in Europe and not go. And it led to deaths of millions, possibly. And he says, yes, but, they, but neither, none of the rabbis, they had Kulim, they had questions and issues to deal with, but no one said to go to Harabai. For some reason, Rabbi Ness says, this is just totally different, and this puts people out of the fold which I uh, don't fully understand. I don't understand that at all, honestly. Why he is not viewed as a machlokas? Yes, great, great rabbis maintain one cannot go. But there are great rabbis that maintain one could go. And what would be the problem with their students following? Their rabbi, Rav Dovli or students, Rav Rav Nevich's students, Rav Melamed, from Havracha, what would be the problem with their students following their Rav? So to me, uh, sad, I'm not uh, understanding Rav Avinair. I love him. He's a great, great man. 
But to me, by saying that people go up now, it's a chayram, a communication, or something like that, it's bringing it to a new level, which, in Yitz Hashem, I hope the next days will bring clarity to this issue. Maybe he'll explain his position. Maybe he'll clarify. It's not exactly what he meant. In Yitz Hashem, Yitz Hashem. I think it's very important to to distinguish between a machlokas, where we have machlokas, argues and clients of the Shem Shamayim, where both sides are in the fold, and then a machlokas, a person out of the fold. And to me, I don't see how this is the case of the latter. It seems to me a case of the former. Shalom.